Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. We have this very important announcement from Ripple today, raising the bar, reporting on volume. And they are going to do this uh, a little bit differently. So it's not only the volume, but the sales of XRP. And also, there is another really interesting video from the XRP camp uh, reaching out over to the Bitcoin camp and LTC camp. And no, it's not the Sam I Am video, which is very, very good. Absolutely worth watching. But yet another one. It's wonderful that these conversations are occurring. Not only can you learn a lot if you're new in the space, but even if you've been in the space a long time and you are not fully up to what the other camps are thinking about XRP, because sometimes XRP evokes a very strong emotion. And I think listening with a careful ear to what the other people are thinking about XRP gives us great insight as to why there's so much misunderstanding. And then there's a little bit of chatter on Twitter in regards to the payments app, the mobile app that's going to be launched domestically here in Japan by SBI that works on Ripple technology because the HODL wrote a report and unfortunately the HODL just kind of led people down a uh, path that is not exactly correct. So first though, I want to look at this article or this release here where we actually are going to see a change and it is due really because of the inaccuracy to data on reported volume. Now this isn't just Ripple in, in their inaccuracies. This is the whole entire space and it has a lot to do with a lot of factors actually. Uh, bot trading and wash trading and also some exchanges that are doing um, reporting of volume and moving moving digital assets to look like they're doing more volume than they really are. So I, I'm really happy to see that Ripple is doing its part because as an industry, we must do better as they are quoted as saying. So they are going to look at better understanding how to evaluate the approach of reporting volume. And they may look at new options for sourcing market data, which I think is great. If they can be a market leader in getting the space cleaned up a little bit, uh, this is going to be very good. The most important part, I think, is this area here where they announce that they are going to take a conservative approach to sales in quarter two. So they are letting everybody know that the ripple sales of XRP in Q2, we are already in the third month of Q2, are going to be lower. And it's lower as a percentage of reported volume than in the previous quarter, which uh, they have stated a target of 20 basis points for programmatic sales, not OTC sales. These are programmatic sales of XRP volume as reported by CoinMarketCap. And they are likely uh, dropping to less than 10 basis points. So in the longer term, by being more demanding about our expected standards for market structure and reporting, we hope to begin raising the bar for the industry wide. This is fantastic. So if you just let me just shed a little bit of light on programmatic sales. This is in sometimes called bot trading or whale bot trading or algorithmic trading. It's uh, done with the algorithms has been around for decades and it's really milliseconds or even microseconds matter. So what do they do? Well, they use these software trading programs to take advantage of the difference between exchanges of price, which is called arbitrage. And then sometimes even the market making can continuously buy and sell on a variety of spot digital currencies. And in with those derivative contracts, they capture those spreads. So anyone can do this and you can do it with even off the shelf software, some software programs being better than others, but you're not going to get away from this kind of uh, algor algorithmic trading. But I think in trying to um, clean up the space, we have to have some better systems on on grabbing the market that is the market data that is correct and accurate and true 
so that we can uh, really have a clear picture on the space. So when we go take a look here at the uh, Market 2 2019 XRP market reports, you can see that the uh, sales for programmatic um, XRP was 107 million. And it was up from the Q4 2018, which sat at about uh, 88 million. Now, I reached out to Galgatron. I really respect Galgatron's thinking because uh, when it comes to critical thinking, uh, it's just seemingly always uh, better than the average bear out there. And so Galgatron says that the reduced sales have had little, if any, effect upon the price. And that is a really, really good observation because, like I said, we're into the third month of the second quarter already and what we've seen a little bit of a price increase yes 20 percent or so but um the whole market has really had that increase so i don't think it really is to this new change of lowering those programmatic sales and also galgatron goes on to say that the largest contributing factor to price in the markets are the whale bots and the absence of Ripple sales merely means it's going to divert those funds to whales and not to increase the price. So I think that I agree with that. And in another way, uh, it, it can be said that Ripple has had such a free large stash that they can front run the whale bots or they have been front running the whale bots. They still are, but in a reduced amount. And the whale bots effectively always front run the retail investors like you and I. So, um, yeah, I think the jury is still out. I want to make some conclu conclusions, but remember, I am subject to change as I I always want to remain flexible in my thinking. So as of today, I think that this action by Ripple should reduce some sell pressure. I, I do, uh, but it still remains to be seen. I think it takes a little bit longer than just the short couple of months that we've seen so far. It also may lead to more transparency in their selling methodology. I'd really like to see that. And it will also maybe lead to more information, detailed information on the reselling restrictions that are sold on the contractual basis by Ripple to their partners and also to that that are gifted as well because we know that there is a lot of XRP that's also gifted out there within the RippleNet Accel Accelerator program and through Spring and um, you know even what this article talks about the Ellen DeGeneres Wildlife Fund where they received XRP so yeah, it's a, it's, a, I get a little winded. It's such a big subject. And I know that it is a little sometimes confusing to understand, but uh, we are in a very complex space. And I'm going to go back to my thoughts yesterday. And I do believe that as more people, more partners, more banks, more payment institutions, more uh, fintechs come online to utilize XRP, Ripple gets them started with uh, an initial um, usage of XRP. And that's, that's okay, that's great. That is how we're going to see XRP grow in terms of XRapid. So I was really saying that we need to pay attention to how much XRP returns back to escrow because that gives us an indication as to how much has been um, put out into the ecosystem to be used. And that was what I was trying to say yesterday because I got a couple of questions on the comment section of yesterday's video. Okay, moving along. Uh, so this is the um, video with Sam and Bitcoin Ben that took place, what, very recent, just like, uh, like yesterday, I think it was. I start losing track of days. It was just within the last 24 or 48 hours. And then there is another video with Matt Hamilton. This one is two hours long, but I'll tell you, it is well worth your two hours if you have to break it up into chunks. But for Matt Hamilton to really clearly explain the decentralized digital asset of XRP and that 
XRP has nothing to do with banks. It's just as crazy if you say Bitcoin is a drug dealer coin. I love the way he gave that analogy because it's so true. And he goes through the history of how it was created with Jeb, uh, Jed, David, and Arthur Brito. And even David did some initial batch transaction coding for Bitcoin. So people get a misunderstanding that the, that the birth of Ripple, the company, and the token XRP are are one in the same and they're not. And, you know, the one thing that the uh, original three that came up with the current use of the XRP token, they wanted to do something that didn't require so much power consumption in regards to mining and also something that was a bit faster. And they did just that. So the original company, Ripple, actually had a slogan back in 2006, which was created by Ryan Fugger, be your banker. So this had the same concept that the people who really support Bitcoin in a very ideological way. This is how that company originally started. It was a P2P credit system, but it didn't have a token at that time. It did have the goal to disintermediate the banks and the rippling payment system was how it got its name. Well, then of course we know that Bitcoin solved that double spend problem and then the birth of the XRP token and those two concepts became the XRP ledger. And Bitcoin Ben at the 34 minute mark, he has an aha experience where he starts to understand the liquidity of XRP in regards to the XRP ledger. And uh, yeah, you're going to love it because uh, Matt Hamilton runs a node, so he can talk a lot about how those nodes operate, how they approve transactions, what the difference is in consensus versus the way that um, Bitcoin operates and the snapshots or the transactions that are taken of that last and new entry. It's really, really, really good, I'm telling you. Um, yes, you can actually download the entire node history. It's about eight terabytes right now, according to Matt, but you don't need to do that to participate in the network. Anybody can uh, operate in the network. It is not something that Google, or Google, that Ripple says that you're approved and you're not approved to do it. Uh, even Weetzy Win created a Google Bit query data that will allow you to look at that entire history. So nothing stops anybody from seeing it. And at the 46 minute mark, uh, it's really, really interesting to talk um, or to listen to the uh, facts about XRP is a blockchain and that it does have an hash. It does have a hash of the whole blockchain. And Ben asked some really good questions. So I just am happy that he asked really good questions because no doubt there are the same people out there with the same sort of questions. And yeah, I don't want to just keep going on and on about this video because I want you to watch it. But here is my favorite quote from the video. X current is like paying with a visa card. X rapid is like paying your visa bill in real time. So when you put it into those, I summarized, but when you put it into that context, you can really understand the difference between X current and X rapid. And also um, the Bitcoin buyers who are using US dollars on Coinbase may even be going through uh, via XRP right now and they don't even know it. That is really, that is really funny. So it also talks a little bit about Coil and Kava Labs. I'm just telling you, this is a must see video. And thanks to both these guys who are having these kind of conversations because it just talk about raising the bar in the cryptocurrency community. This is just fantastic. Okay. Uh, well, there's a lot of uh, inf there's a lot of chatter out there about the money tap. I'm I'm going to be on Jungle Inc's um, stream. I don't know if we're going to do it live or if we're going to do it taped. I don't know, and I don't care. Um, anything Jungle wants to do, Jungle is one of my favorite people. Uh, I think he's the coolest guy in, in the whole space, <laughs> hands down, the coolest guy. So I uh, whatever he wants to do, I'm going to do. I'm going to actually. 
um, take some photographs and some video to prepare because I really want everyone to uh, understand what's happening in Japan. And I, I don't know it all, but but I do know um, a little bit because I do a lot of research in Japanese. So I'm reading a lot of articles in Japanese and I thought, yeah, well, you guys can do the same. So on the um, Twitter, I showed everybody how to actually search those money tap XRP SBI stories because you can't do it in English. You have to use the Japanese uh, hiragana. Actually, this is all katakana. Is it all katakana? Uh, all katakana. Yeah, it's all katakana. Katakana is the type of um, characters that are used for imported Western words. So you have to use these uh, characters in order to get the results in Japanese. And then, you know, if you um, have the capability to just use Google Translate. Google Translate is not perfect, but it is pretty darn good. And it's going to give you enough of um, information that you'll at least understand what's going on. Okay, so you can uh, access that by doing that. And what I wanted to highlight is that um, the domestic mobile app is not going to use XRP because there's no need to use XRP domestically. Now, if you go back to um, the Daiwa conference that was held in January, Mr. Kitao said at the one hour, 13 minute mark that, uh, and I will show you exactly what he said here. He thinks MoneyTap is great and this DLT distributed ledger technology is the Ripple DLT technology that we are investing in and partnering with. And eventually there is XRP, Ripple's currency, there is a remittance between banks and we will be able to make an immediate remittance between banks faster and with little cost. And he's talking really uh, in, in other interviews like on CoinPost or whatever, he talks about rolling money tap out beyond the domestic landscape. And also too, I want to show you, there's a page, what is it, 155, page one, oh, sorry, page 106 of 155 pages, where he also makes an interesting um, uh, statement in this particular uh, PowerPoint. And that is, you can see here in the black, that for further improvement, of convenience, we will consider the implementation of X, FX transfer function and the use of XRP at the time of implementation from various angles, including legal maintenance, etc. So there is a lot going on and you don't have a better partner out there to push XRP into uh, multiple ecosystems and also to be used and, and also to roll out XRAPID than Mr. Kitao of SBI. So um, the daily hodl, I think, just kind of put the cart, what do we say, cart in front of the horse or the horse? Yeah, cart in front of the horse where uh, he is saying that the XRP is going to be in the uh, money tap like it's a done deal. Well, domestically, I don't think so. So we will talk more about this in Jungle's um, video when I am uh, able to talk about this in a little bit more detail. For now though, I think I want to say, let's jump into the fluff, okay? So here is Japan's first blockchain. <laughs> You're gonna laugh, right? This is called Gyotaku. It is a fish rubbing, and it was a method to record fishermen's catch uh, way back in the 17, 1800s. They use a sumi ink, which is a, like a stick of hard, charcoal that you mix with water and create a very, very uh, dark black ink. And with the washi, which is a handmade paper, fishermen made these impressions to commemorate the size of the fish. So tackle shops in Japan still, especially in Okinawa, they display these yet today uh, for many catch and release fishermen. And it's just, you know, the first, very first idea of blockchain, I think, because it records the size of the fish 
for generations to come. It was a form of a of a permanent record. And you can see that it is even catching on in other parts of the world. Here is, I think, a fisherman in the United States. Looks like the South, just from what I can see here. Um, and there's a lot of people making gyotaku, which is fantastic. And if I show you, this is what the ink looks like when it is combined with water. This technique actually uh, was not invented in Japan. It was uh, from ancient history coming from China, where people began to make multiple copies of records that were carved into stone, and then they would take the ink and paper and make multiple copies. Um, in Japan, the fishermen would carry the supplies, the ink, the brush, and the paper out to sea to make the uh, copies of the fish on the boat, sometimes releasing the fish and then sometimes not, sometimes cleaning the fish and making the print from the cleaned fish. Uh, this is one that I think is just beautiful. So it has really become an art form that it's much more than just a uh, rubbing or print. They actually go back in and paint on top of the, um, the print the eyes and add color. This is beautiful, isn't it? So they have uh, taken the photograph and then created the record of that fish. I love that one. That one's really beautiful. And then there is a gentleman who is in the Tokyo area and he has opened his home up to foreigners for doing prints. And you can see here, he's not just doing fish. This is a giant squid. Yes, the squid do come this big and actually they come even bigger in Japan. Uh, uh, that's a whole nother story. There was a giant squid discovered that was really um, amazing. It was a documentary that came out, I don't know, two years ago. I mean, we're talking the eye must have been like, I don't know, the eye was this big. It was quite quite shocking to see how big it actually was. And uh, I just wanted to share this one with you personally. I think this one is so fabulous in terms of its color and technique. I love this one. So if you come uh, to Tokyo and you want to do this yourself, there is a studio just outside the city that you can go to and do your own fish rubbing or fish print. And here is the gentleman, his Instagram. So Mineo Yamamoto Fish Printer. And if you just make a note of his Instagram, you'll be able to get that information when you come to Japan and go to his studio and have fun. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for today. I know I took up a little bit of your time. I tried to go as fast as possible. Do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.